Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand for its technical analysis. If you are new to watching my videos, a warm welcome to you and if you're returning, welcome back and uh, don't forget to like, subscribe and share if you find the content of use and I just want to say thank you as well to all those who have been encouraging and leaving comments and uh, you know positive comments in my videos as well I, I, I really uh, thank you and appreciate your your comments and uh, if you guys if any of you guys would like to join trading 180 um, and join a great community of traders um, I have a 50% discount um, which is going to expire on the 12th of January 2020 um, at 11.59 London time p.m. So, uh, yeah, if you want to join um, and really get really in-depth analysis on supply and demand, this is not just your normal technical pattern. There's loads that goes behind um, supply and demand from stop hunting to capture pain relief to um, zero sum game to psychology to daily supply and demand zones everything in, is encompassed in this course it's l literally over easily over uh, I would say 50 hours of content including um, the weekly uh, group calls and mentoring sessions and videos that I put in daily for the group so um, again this will be expiring very very soon so if you want to take it up if you're not, um, that's that's fine too. Uh, I'll, I'll definitely see you uh, at some point and uh, keep watching my YouTube videos. So um, we'll get off and, and start on the trading economics, fundamental and sentiment analysis and looking at uh, the week ahead. Actually, in fact, before we get into the week ahead, let's look at the, the week just gone. And really what's happened is uh, global stocks march higher as US Iran tensions ease. So um, on Monday, well, last week Monday, and and over the last weekend, you know the uh, risk off rhetoric regarding you know war, uh, potential war, um, U.S. civilians potentially being killed, Iran retaliating, um, tro troops being deployed, um, has literally done a total 180, um, and uh, you know risk is less off. I guess I'm not saying that it's pretty much over, but. Um, Donald Trump has really kind of de-escalated the situation. So um, uh, the uh, stock market in a risk, more risk on environment will march higher and has actually made, I think the Dow has made new highs. So the, uh, yeah, so the US stocks, Wall Street traders near record highs, brush off weak date jobs data. So we had some weak jobs data regarding the US non-farm payrolls. So uh, US jobs slow more than expected in December. But apparently it was um, it wasn't as bad as um, uh, what was expected. So the hiring, the pace of hiring remained more than enough to keep the longest economic expansion in history on track. While Friday's report also showed the jobless rate holding near a 50 year low of 3.5 percent and average hourly earnings rising 0 0.1 in the previous month. So it's. Um, so somebody has quoted, I think, Quincy Crosby, chief market strategist at Prudential Financial in uh, Newark, New Jersey, said that this report is almost in line with consensus, except the wage aspect. So if it's in line, buy the rumor, sell the facts. So even though the numbers came out as, you know, quite negative, apparently the uh, traders were looking at that as expected. So the headlines, you know, was, you know, December dampener, but overall, I guess it was expected. Hence, the reason why you probably didn't see, uh, you know, that many um, uh, or price really move uh, in on a dollar for Friday. But let's go into this week. So busy week. Trade negotiations will be in the spotlight as Beijing sends a uh, delegation to Washington for a three-day visit to sign the so-called Phase One deal with the US. So is there a trading opportunity with that? Absolutely. If you hear um, that the deal is not gonna be on or talks break down, pretty much you're gonna, you know, the chances are you probably wanna look to sell the dollar. Um, so, but again, this isn't gonna be something that 
will come out as a, um, a news event on something like Forex Factory. Um, it will be probably over the news wires. So um, it's best to probably keep an ear out for that. <clears throat> So, because the expectation, the expectation is for them to sign a deal. So, if they don't sign a deal, then obviously risk off. And uh, I guess currencies like the Swiss franc and the Japanese yen will end up um, increasing in value as uh, they are a safe haven currency. So, meanwhile, key, key economic data to follow include the U.S. inflation rate. That's going to be very important because that's important for the Federal Reserve monetary policy, whether they're going to be holding or cutting soon. Industrial output, retail trade in Michigan, consumer sentiment, China, fourth quarter GDP. That's important for global economic growth. If China starts to slow down, it could be a global slowdown uh, and trade balance and the UK monthly GDP, retail sales and inflation figures, again, important for the UK. So let's get into the technicals and starting off, as we always do, on the US dollar index and the dollar index. So from last week, pretty much we had um, prices you know, rise from here. Um, the dollar was really kind of shrugged off the um, the, the 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 war tensions, and uh, we did you know get see the dollar actually move higher. I'm bullish dollar, and I've been bullish dollar for you know for a few years now. So this was a nice buying opportunity as far as looking for confluence, and then I was um, you know looking to buy the dollar um, against uh, some other currencies. But looking at the dollar index, which is a measure of dollar strength against the main currencies like the euro yen and the pound and even the australian dollar um, when you see something like this occur on there that's when you want to go over to the uh, dollar crosses and look for you know strength on the dollar um into this week we're pretty much into this you know range at the moment so we've got the supply zone demand zone i think there will be um you know due to probably some negative sentiment regarding jobs uh you could see obviously prices start to fall um, and then that will obviously coincide with um, maybe some dollar weakness on any of the dollar crosses but if you're looking to buy the dollar then if prices come down here and then you get some bullish price action in that demand zone right there that's where we are looking to get long uh, moving on to the dollar yen dollar yen so um, last week Again, we wanted to. I wanted to be long here, but couldn't get long here simply because of risk off, as the Japanese yen tends to strengthen the risk off environment. But the market shrugged off the risk off, the you know the war sentiment. So um, you saw pretty much what happens. The yen has weakened, um, and the dollar has strengthened. Now is there still an opportunity to get long? Of course there is, and really the opportunity is from this area here. And this is what I would consider hidden demand this outside what is known as the outside capture pain candle as I call it um, but an outside candle uh, outside day whatever it is the name doesn't really matter but this wick is what is known as hidden demand right here so um, I'm interested in anywhere around the lows the 108 um, round number to the 1078 1077 number for any kind of long trades as long as risk is still on that would be a nice uh, by the time we get down there anyway if we do get down there um, if risk is on then that would be a nice buy if risk starts to come off this week this is going to be a very nice area to get short in and um, there's a particular um, setup i'm looking for if i was looking to get short on this and i've told uh traders in the group about this and they know this you know which is basically a bit of a stop hunt this is a nice level look for a stop hunt up top and if talks break down you know between donald trump and um and the uh delegates from china that's going to be a very nice area to look for some short trades within that supply zone as well just above a nice little fresh area of supply up here so very nice at the moment you want to kind of maybe try to stay away from entering levels that have been touched several times so this level and this price zone has been touched not only once twice you know three times now nah, i'm not really keen on that um but again risk off by the end risk on you're looking for 
dollar strength. Moving on to the dollar Swiss, dollar Swiss. Um, what we have at the moment is a bit of demand, I guess, here. It's not necessarily typically strong demand at the moment in the way that I uh, draw demand, but there is demand here. So um, prices have pretty much gone sideways. Let's see what happens. But if you do want to get involved uh, long, then you're probably looking for a move really kind of back down to um, the lows of this kind of created demand zone around this 0 0.966 area or slightly lower, which would be the demand zone that was created from September 2018. If we can get some, uh, some uh, price action that comes down here and also if risk is on and the reason why risks should be on um, before you buy is because the Swiss franc is not doesn't do well in a risk on environment or tends not to anyway if not again if prices do kind of come down etc then that would be the definite nice area to buy the Swiss franc um, other than that if you're looking to um, sorry, buy the US dollar I should say if you're buying looking to buy the Swiss franc you've got two options if prices make their way up here that's the first area to get short or if prices start to make new lows new lower highs and lower lows then you're looking for a pullback into those lower highs in order to get short so you want price to pull back into there and then look for some short trades so um again make sure that risk is off before looking to buy the swiss franc over the us dollar moving on to the dollar cad and dollar cad um nice bounce from here from this demand zone fresh demand well fresher demand anyway been touched once so that's okay right here prices really kind of made this steep move down so there was a nice opportunity to get long on the lower time frames you know like the one hour two hour etc right nice you know potential entries around here and prices did make their way higher the cad did have some decent news matter of fact so um uh, regarding employment so uh that was actually quite decent here's going to be the next uh demand zone so what you probably want to do if you're looking to buy the us dollar is wait for a pullback into that area there if you're looking for a sell trade either you're going to have to wait for price to do something like this before into this zone before getting short or again like the uh dollar swiss you're looking for a move down move up move down and then a pullback into um uh, a supply zone a newly created supply zone so those are your options new zealand dollar us dollar and uh and we've got decent um price coming down to a decent demand zone if you want to be a buyer of the new zealand dollar here we are so we've got a bit of a bounce here the us dollar is really the, the number one um currency at the moment and uh, on our fundamental analysis spreadsheet, the um, New Zealand dollar is number three. So <clears throat> you're kind of buying um, into a bit of strength at the moment. So I think this is a decent area for price to potentially turn around, especially because, you know, we've got some negative sentiment towards the dollar. So nice buying opportunity there. We do have some supply in the way uh, doesn't mean a price can't break through them but just uh, be aware of it if you are looking to sell the New Zealand dollar and buy the US dollar personally I'd rather wait for price if price can get up to this point up here that would be the better area that I would look for some sort of uh, buying opportunity because if price is potentially in a range between that high and that low this is obviously seen as an expensive area, right? This is an expensive area for the New Zealand dollar, yeah, because there's no more demand for the New Zealand dollar. So if prices have started to come down, this is a proven expensive area, so or potentially a bargain area for the US dollar. So if prices come back up here, that's the best area to look for potential shorts for the US dollar. That's uh, the way the supply and demand works. Um, so either buy now or deeper into this uh, demand zone, uh, or if you're looking to buy the US dollar, 
up into this this uh, 0 0.673 number and uh, and beyond and then look for any kind of short trades pound dollar so pound dollar um, I'm looking to get short on this um, Mark Carney there was uh, some some news that kind of um, slipped under the uh, under the radar um, or it may not have for you but um, I noticed it and it was Mark Carney pretty much said that they may look to cut rates if the U if the British economy um, isn't doing well um, and again with Brexit on the horizon pretty much apparently we're supposed to leave at the end of the month uh, more uncertainty why would the British pound get stronger that's the question you have to ask yourself N nothing's for certain obviously this is a game of probabilities but what's the probably what's the likelihood of you know the, the British pound um, you know weakening then strengthening I think it's more likely that British pound should weaken um, especially economically so um, I'm going to be short so looking for short trades I've got to wait for prices to really kind of come up to you know an area um, where I think uh, I want to be a shorter or a buyer of the US dollar um, at a, you know a nice exchange rate so let's see what happens if not, I mean, if you want to be a buyer of the British pound, things could turn around, obviously, and uh, the pound could get some, you know, really good positive sentiment when it comes to the economy. Um, then that's a decent area of demand to look for some buying. But I'll be looking for short trades if prices can kind of pull back, which would be nice as it goes this week or into the next week or two. If the dollar's got some negative sentiment, but then the British pound... Um, and, the, and uh, Mark Carney decides to potentially cut rates. That would be very nice for a short trade. Uh, Euro dollar and Euro dollar. So uh, we've got some demand zones, sorry, supply zones right here. Right there to there. Supply. And we've got supply here. Now, again, I want to be short on this currency pair. I'm buying the dollar. So. I'm waiting for prices to come up to here before looking for any kind of entries or here even better yet if you can get a fresh maybe a fresher area of supply up here if prices can get that high um, and see what happens but um, if you do want to get long on the euro I would say probably now's the time or potentially if you're looking for a really good area I would say this fresh area of demand right here if prices can get down to this 1.106 1.105 half number before looking at any kind of uh, long trades um, again you have to really kind of understand why you're buying <coughs> the euro <coughs> sorry from a uh, fundamental perspective technical patterns you know if you're just buying at, at demand and selling at supply I think you're at um, you're, you're, you're really not at the, uh, the you haven't really got that much of an edge um, um, other than just a technical and statistical pattern you're really looking at um, you know the fundamentals as to why you really want to be a buyer why is this why is the euro a bargain down here that's that's the question you have to ask yourself well, why is the dollar a bargain at these areas and uh, really that's derived from uh, fundamental analysis and looking at things like GDP inflation and interest rates um, Moving on to the euro yen, euro yen. So again, more risk on sentiment coming to the market. Prices didn't really push lower. Now this demand, obviously, demand zone looks looks actually quite nice. And prices have kind of moved to the upside. If there is some risk of sentiment that comes into the market, I think this area around here is going to be a decent for a short. Even bet would be really nice. Just above this level here, Let's zoom out a little bit. So yeah somewhere around here for any kind of shorts um, for long trades I'd probably look for maybe something a bit a bit deeper actually as it as it goes I think this level this level's all right and there's a reason for that <clears throat> um, and it's because pretty much there's a lot of traders that have been caught offside here and they've been caught offside by the risk of sentiment so they would assume that prices were going lower so um, if they're caught in their positions, i.e. they don't use stop losses, then these guys have to do what to exit? They have to buy to exit. If they got short, then they have to do the opposite to exit. So that should add to the supply and demand equation at this area here. So 
actually in fact I don't mind that area to look for <coughs> if I was looking for long trades to be fair though I'm not really looking to buy the euro anytime soon against this currency pair um, um, not 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 the uh, not the euro uh, at the moment even though I actually I'm long on the euro against the Swiss franc but that's uh, for um, insiders and that's the reason why we are long on the euro Swiss franc but anyways um, Aussie dollar Aussie dollar so uh, we're at a nice demand zone fresh demand as well the Australian dollar um, has been doing actually quite well so if you were going to buy the Australian dollar, um, I wouldn't necessarily buy it against the US dollar. But if the US dollar is going to get weaker due to some, you know, some negative sentiment about regarding the economy as far as jobs, then I think the Australian dollar is the best currency to, um, you know, uh, to kind of short it against or go long against. So um, I think think at the moment now is a decent time for a long trade probably maybe on the daily is probably gone a little bit i was saying to traders in the discord group that um you know as far as news trading you probably i think prices were down here yeah, i think some traders have got long around here um but uh yeah let's see what happens anyway i think from a daily perspective you might have to just say if you've got um enough to the upside enough risk reward to the upside then take it if not then um, then you might have to wait for a bit of a pullback before getting long like that something like that anyway um, short trades are going to be from really from here right there so that'd be the first area I'd look for trading opportunity to get short the prices can get up there that's obviously very um, either expensive for the Australian dollar or a bargain for the US dollar and I would wager that's probably more of a bargain for the US dollar so um, let's see what happens with this but um, decent long trade right there and finally the Aussie yen and Aussie yen did break through this demand zone as uh, that was I think that was Monday yeah that would that would have been the Monday um, Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday yeah so um, there was a bit of uh, selling off, but then again, the markets just literally reacted, um, you know, from this demand zone and uh, gone a lot higher from there. Uh, again, risk on sentiment coming into the market or less risk off, as I like to kind of put it. And we have this wide zone of demand because we've really kind of made new highs yeah so when you've got a really wide zone like this you've got a very very wide zone what you want to do is you want to break it down yeah and so one of the techniques and things that I use is to understand where there should be more demand or more supply um, at certain zones or certain levels right so and try and get a bit more intricate so you can see around this area here we've got resistance bit of resistance bit of support bit of resistance right around here so it makes sense that if prices come down here from a technical analysis perspective where do you think where do you think traders right are going to be looking to potentially get involved in the long trade yeah same thing around you know probably somewhere like this where you've got a bit of support and resistance in that area there you've got a pretty little micro level right here when I say micro level I'm talking about if you was to zoom down into the lower time frame let's say for example the three hour you can see where you've got support 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 so within these areas you can start to see where you would want to potentially get long also this is the 74 half number as well um, around here is just below the uh, round number there etc so um, this is how we kind of break down these wide zones and also as well if you want to get a bit more accuracy you may want to look for 
that area there that area actually looks all right for a within this area of demand so you can see it on the daily time frame yeah you can see it's a general area we got resistance resistance support resistance but if you actually zoom in as well you can see that there isn't that a nice level where you've got that top of that wick bottom of that wick bottom of that wick yeah and that represents itself just above that zone there so that's a very nice price area where price may come back to yeah price may come back to here and this is where not only are we in the daily demand zone yeah we're also looking at where tr other traders are looking to potentially buy as well within this area and if anyone's getting short up here then where are they taking profit potentially going to be somewhere around here a problematic area so if they're shorting here they have to buy to exit new traders are potentially getting in here if they're getting in and they're taking new long trades what are they doing buying as well so all the buying from a technical analysis perspective is demand so there's net net potentially we have a great um uh, location within this wider area of demand yeah as to where we should potentially look for long trades if we want to be a buyer of the Aussie um, Australian dollar over the Japanese yen from a uh, uh, a selling perspective the yen I do like this zone here I really do if risk comes back off and prices are up there that is a very nice short trade nice uh, uh, nice uh, strong um, supply there you can see the way price kind of fell away so if prices come up to here I think this should be a decent um, supply zone to look for some short trades if risk becomes off so um, that's it for this week again thank you for watching don't forget to like subscribe and share the 50% discount really runs out at, um, uh, on the 12th of January 11.59 p.m. London time so um, take advantage if you want to take advantage and uh, guys I will see you soon have a great trading week and take care